Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy, also ETCG1 on this channel. If it is your birthday, I wish to wish you a very, very special happy birthday. Why? Because I can. Today's discussion, misconceptions about performance parts. Performance parts, what are they? Well, there are things that we add to our vehicles to make them perform better. Um, if you're off-roading, you might upgrade your suspension. If you have an import such as what I have back there, you might um, add a turbo or do other suspension type modifications. Also going back to suspension and behind me, I also have the Fairmont. I tried to bring it all together here. So I took a while to set up the shot. I, I'm, I'm kind of proud of it. Point being is I think there are quite a few misconceptions out there about performance parts. And there's, there's plenty of videos here on YouTube about uh, busting the myths of some performance parts. Uh, it was a while back and I've referred to this in the past. Mighty Car Mods did one about cold air intakes and then they went back and did another one about cold air intakes. That I think is where the biggest uh, confusion lies in that you're gonna be able to bolt on something and it's instantly gonna give you more power than you initially had. Uh, recently did a video about replacing the exhaust header on my GSR back there. And I, I really didn't notice any kind of significant performance difference in it. And I'm okay with that. I honestly didn't expect any. I was just uh, making a video and also utilizing a part that I saved for that day. I mean, I, I've had that part Jeez, it's more than 10 years. Let's just put it that way. I've had that part for more than 10 years waiting for the day when I got myself a GSR so I could put it on there just because I could. I wasn't expecting much, but some of you even got into the comments of that and said, well, you know, you should have seen maybe two or three horsepower or something like that, trying to give me like real numbers. And, and many others pointed out that it's not just an exhaust header that's going to get you where you need to be. You also need to do the rest of the exhaust system. You also need to do something on the intake side. And that's, that's kind of what I'm trying to get to in this video. And that, and that bolting on power that can suddenly give you all this horsepower, I think is just complete and total BS. If you're going to modify a system, you're going to have to understand the system first and understand how it's working as it is in its stock form. That way you know where and how you can make those improvements. That's probably 98% uh, of the reason that I wanted to make the Fairmont videos and that's the reason why they're taking so long. And people are like, oh, what do you get more favorite? Why is this taking forever? Well, the reason for that is, is because when you go to build a car like this, it's not just one part. It's not just an engine. It's a whole system of things that are all supposed to work together to give you the performance that you're looking for. That's what I've been trying to say for the longest time with this. I even went go back to the Fairmont, the plan. If you're just thinking you're going to bolt together a bunch of things and everything's going to be better, think again, because in some ways you could, it could even be detrimental to your build. That's what I'm trying to, to do here with this video is just give you just a little bit of insight that could say, you know, hey, <laughs> it doesn't necessarily work the way you think it's going to work. And well, first of all, you'll definitely spend more money than you're thinking you're gonna spend to try to get the gains you're gonna get. But at the end of the day, it's about improving the system as a whole, not just adding one part and hoping it gets better because I can't say as we saw with the Integra header replacement, because you weren't in the car, you didn't feel the difference. And some of you said, well, I think I could hear the VTEC kick in a little bit better. And, and that's probably true. I think the biggest benefit that I got out of that header replacement was the weight savings. I saved a lot of weight out of that car by removing that uh, old stock manifold. And for those of you that said uh, the tubes on the header are smaller, I mean, there were people like really reaching. In fact, this video is kind of a response to those comments. There were a lot of people that were really reaching, trying to justify that part. And I think it was for their own sake more than mine and that they wanted to believe that, that the header that they spent, like those headers, I looked them up, they're a couple hundred bucks, easy. So if you're going to spend a couple hundred bucks on a part, you're going to want to see some result. It's just human nature. I mean, come on, why would you spend the money if you don't see some result from it? I, I totally get it. But the thing of it is, it's like I said earlier, and like many people also mentioned in the comments, it's not just the exhaust header that's going to give you performance improvement. It's, uh, you know, high flowing exhaust, a different catalytic converter, different pipes, different muffler. Uh, no, I don't want to put a fart can on it. Uh, it's the intake. It's the cold air intake, if you want to call it that. 
this purpose of this video is just to try to rein you in a little bit and those of you that may be new to performance modifications and things like that and just put a little common sense into it like understand the system before you go in and know what improvements to make and come on in this day and age there's a forum for just about everything you could find your vehicle out there find out what other people have done and succeeded with and failed with avoid their failures and capitalize on their successes in my opinion that's what the internet is for <laughs> as long as people are sharing factual information yeah trying to find good information that's the trick that's the rub with all this digital stuff now isn't it but anyway your thoughts on uh performance parts is there something to it uh or not and i i, I just have this feeling in the back of my head that a lot of people are going to jump on the whole ebay bandwagon you can't buy these performance parts off ebay they're just crap a lot of people sell stuff on ebay including reputable companies so it's it's hard to say that one way or another. It's, I would say try to avoid generalizations because <laughs> they get you into trouble. Trust me, I know. Anyhow, if you have automotive questions, I ask you head to airatthecargot.com. Link in the description for that for you. Google Plus, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. If you wish to connect with me socially, be safe, have fun, stay dirty. Looking forward to your comments. I'll see you next time.